What up, cucks? It's your boy, The Hater. And it's been a long day, but Thursdays are like my Fridays because I've given myself Friday and Saturday off. So even though it's late, I got a lot of energy left. So I was taking a shower, and as I tend to do, before I take a shower, I'll put on like a podcast or some music or something, right? Now, I've been noticing a lot of wrestlers and other wrestling uh, channels as well as other ancillary parties doing these videos all of a sudden where they're trying to raise money for battered women's shelters and all the other things and they hang this onto the Vince McMahon scandal. Now, I'm here to tell you a couple of things. Number one, I can't speak to the motivations of uh, these people and I've seen so many videos that it would be absurd for me to paint with a broad brush. But I will tell you this. Donating to charity, if you ever want to do it, it's a good habit, but if you ever want to do it, make sure you donate directly to the charity. Here's why, cucks, and I'll explain it with a few examples, right? Now, several wrestling charlatans have been all of a sudden doing videos saying, I'm going to donate to this, and I'm going to donate to that, so you donate to me, YouTube takes 30%, and then I donate the rest. I'm not worried about the money that YouTube takes because YouTube is the platform that is gathering the money. That seems to be fair. But here's what a lot of people don't understand, right? When you donate to charity through another party, I'll give you a perfect example that all of you are familiar with. Say you go to Whole Foods or whatever grocery store you like, right? And you go, you buy a Coke, right? You are about to pay with your phone or with your credit card, and a little thing appears and says, hey, you want to donate like a dollar to like, you know, like needy children, right? So you feel guilty and you're like, yeah, I want to help needy children. Boom, here's a dollar. Now here's what happens to the dollar. The dollar is collected by Whole Foods, right? Then Whole Foods takes my dollar, your dollar, and everybody else's dollars. And let's say they get $100,000, right? They donate that $100,000 to charity, right? That's true. That part is correct. But here's what happens. Charity donations are, for those of you that don't know, tax credits and tax exemptions, right? You can deduct them from your taxes. So in other words, let's say that I make $100,000 this year in my job, right? And I get from you guys, let's say, $100,000 to, let's say I get half a million dollars from you guys to donate to some charity, right? I'm donating the money, but I don't have to pay taxes up to the amount of money that I've donated. So in other words, I'm not paying any taxes, right? So what's happening here, for those of you that don't understand, is you're being taken advantage of. When you donate a dollar to St. Jude's through CVS or something, right? CVS is getting something out of that. St. Jude's is as well, but so is CVS, right? In other words, it would be more beneficial to you to donate the money directly to St. Jude's, right? Now, I'm doing this disclaimer because I've seen this pop up a lot. All of a sudden, everyone's a hero. Everyone wants to step up for women's rights. And the hater loves women's rights. I like all that kind of stuff. But I'll say it like it is. Some of the people that are doing these videos know full well what they're doing, right? They really are gathering money for themselves. And while I believe when they say, I'm going to donate everything to the charity, they definitely will. But if they make $100,000 a year, right, and they get... I don't know, $100,000 in donations, right? They don't have to pay taxes on $100,000 on their entire income, basically, right? So they effectively pay no income tax because they've given to charity. But here's the kicker. They haven't given to charity. You've given to charity through them. Now, as I just explained, this normally isn't something that I would talk about because it's not in the spirit of this channel. But given the fact that hater mania is running wild on your bitch ass, right? meaning I have to make a lot of videos like I said I would, and given the fact that I want to talk about other things, and given the fact that this connects directly to wrestling, I felt that people should know. You know, as I expand this channel to other things, and maybe some shorter form content, some longer form content, maybe I'll start editing some videos, you know what I mean, and doing some critiques. It's important to me, right, that what I tell you is useful, right? There's a lot of people on the internet, much bigger than me, that are charlatans, right? They'll go out there, they'll try to trick you into buying something, they'll try to trick you into financing their endeavors, but the hater, you could say what you want, you can disagree with me, you can be a Cody crybaby all you want, but the truth is the truth, 
And the truth is that the hater always says it like it is. I have never lied on this channel one time, cucks. And I don't intend to do it um, in the future. So what I'm getting at here is this, right? When you see something, right? And you think to yourself, wow, why would someone be doing this, right? And you are left with two options. Either they are an angelic being or they are not an angelic being. Chances are they are not an angelic being. Now, does it mean they're bad people? Some people may not even realize this, right? But every time someone tells you, hey, please donate to me so I can donate to charity, right? Ask yourself, why aren't they just saying, hey, go donate to this charity, right? Your money will go a lot longer if you donate directly, especially if you're donating to them through, I don't know, Patreon or through YouTube or whatever, right? Because Patreon and YouTube obviously take a cut, right? Do you see what I'm saying? People are out there trying to manipulate you, right? Now, the hater has some comedy here and there, but the hater provides useful information like this little tidbit, right? Normally, I wouldn't, after my shower, do this. I would make myself a hookah and start maybe playing some video games. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But based on what I heard while taking the shower on a very, very, very small wrestling, I wouldn't call that a podcast. It's like a YouTube show, right? Um, they had also started a charity of sorts, right? This is a very, 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 very small channel that I just stumbled upon, right? I just put something on and then I jumped in the shower. So, you know, I don't really know much about them. I'm not going to say who it is, but, uh, but because it doesn't matter, right? Well, I've seen other, I've seen huge wrestling channels do this. I've seen former wrestlers try to do this, right? So the truth is, yeah, some of them are dipshits and they don't understand what they're doing. They really are just collecting money, of course. But a lot of them are not dipshits. They understand basics of finance and taxes, right? Now, most people don't understand that because these are things that you don't just learn in school, right? As a matter of fact, you don't learn about taxes ever. You pretty much learn about taxes if you go do finance, if you get an MBA, or if you go to law school. That's basically, or I guess obviously if you're an accountant, right? You can be like an apprentice accountant and shit like that. There are obviously other ways to, you can also teach yourself. But generally speaking in school, like in high school, you're not learning that. In college, unless you're majoring in that kind of stuff, you're not learning it. So then you have to learn how to do taxes yourself. And that's where people get confused, and that's where people get rammed, right? They don't understand that their hard-earned money is being used to enrich someone else, right? And these people are even more charlatanistic, if you ask me, because they are hanging their hat on what, at worst, is a criminal uh, charge against Vince waiting to happen, and at best, an unsavory situation, right? And they are leveraging that and using it to take advantage of the weak-minded morons who are also good. As the hater's father always tells the hater, being naive is a sign of being good. So if you've been duped by someone, if you've been scammed by someone, these are all signs that you more likely than not are a good but naive person, right? You trust people. You have faith in people. You think people aren't lying to you, especially when they're nice. And then you look at someone like the hater who says it raw, and then you're like, oh, this guy, I don't like what he says. But I'll tell it to you in truth. Go, lead, go read Khalid Hosseini's book and The Mountains Echoed, and you'll understand, cuckolds. But I digress. The point here is this. People will try to take advantage of you. Use your being and ask yourself, what does someone get out of doing this to me? I'm not saying ask yourself this when your parents or your friends are helping you. I'm saying ask yourself this when someone is trying to be the intermediary between you and someone else. The intermediary always makes the most money. And I will leave this to you with an example that I believe I've used in this channel before. Long ago, in Eastern Africa, right, there were two tribes separated by the Sahara Desert. The tribe in the north was rich in gold, and the tribe in the south was rich in salt, right? Now, back in the day, for those of you that don't know, Salt was worth its weight in gold because salt is a preservative, right? So you get a bunch of food, you throw a lot of salt on it, and boom, it's like that. Some people would consider that to be cooking, right? Now, the problem was the tribe in the north and the tribe in the south did not speak the same language. So there was a tribe in the middle that became the literal middlemen of these two tribes, right? And they learned the language of the north and they learned the language of the south. Now, the, the south wanted gold and the north wanted salt and vice versa, right? The north had gold in abundance. The south, salt in abundance, right? So they would go and meet with the intermediary tribe. And they'd say, look, I've brought 100 kilograms, let's say, 
of gold. And the other person would say, I've brought 100 kilograms of salt. Right? And then the, the middle tribe would say, okay, I'm going to take 60 kilograms of gold and 60 kilograms of salt and then trade your gold and, and your salt to each other. Right? So the tribe that ended up getting the most enriched was not the tribe that had a lot of gold, was not the tribe that had a lot of salt. It was the tribe that had the greatest amount of knowledge. Right? And this parable serves a lot of uses. The primary use is that you can use it yourself to understand that when someone becomes the middleman, there is always an advantage. Nobody's going to be the middleman for nothing. Let's just say, for example, the hater collects $100,000 for charity. At the end of the day, even if my benefit is to say, I donated $100,000 to charity. No, I didn't, right? I, if I gather it from you guys and from my friends, if I fundraise, I didn't donate the money, right? But that's what a fundraiser fundamentally is. So think about these things and let the hater know if you have any questions. And of course, as usual, go fuck yourselves.